the latest episode of the Green Left News Podcast. My name is Isaac Nellis and I'm talking to you from Gadigal Country in Sydney. And this week I'm again joined by Riley. Hi, and I'm joining you from Wadjuk Noongar land in Kulu, Perth. Now, we've both just come from the Eco-Socialism 2024 conference, which took place in Borley, Perth over June 28 to 30. And I mean, I personally had a, a really great time. It was amazing to meet so many activists and hear about such incredible stories. Um, what did you think of the conference, Riley? Yeah, it was um, just fantastic. Um, there's so, so much to say that I probably can't fit into the space of uh, this podcast alone, but um, yeah, had an amazing time. Uh, haven't haven't experienced anything like that. Yeah, it was it was really incredible. I think a, a big highlight for me and for a lot of people I spoke to was the international guests who attended. So there was guests from India, Singapore, Malaysia, South Africa, and then uh, even more guests for on who joined online from Pakistan, uh, from Ireland, and the Philippines. So it was. I feel like that really gave it a, a an extra dynamic of it was really interesting to hear about this the struggles that are going on overseas the kind of the similarities and the differences between you know what we're uh campaigning on here in uh so-called australia did you have any kind of particular sessions that you really enjoyed or uh took something away from um well yeah i mean i took took something away from pretty much all of them really but uh I think the one that's that's really stuck out for me was um, hearing Jeff Spears talk about eco-socialism. Mm. Um, something that, that I, I think I'm really going to carry forward from that is this idea that uh, being in a, an eco-socialist isn't just being uh, a socialist who cares about the environment or an environmentalist who cares about economic justice. It's actually, it's a recognition that you can't actually be one without the other, that you actually need to, to combine the two. Um, that's something that I think I'm actually going to carry forward into to how I how I actually practice my activism. Yeah, that was a really great way of putting it, I thought. And yeah, definitely something to, to think about in, in terms of all the campaigning. Another aspect I thought was good was, um, I guess, the discussion around First Nations campaigning and, and Indigenous sovereignty. But obviously, in, in the Australian context, we had some great First Nations women leaders, including Megan Cracker, and Raylene Cooper, um, as well as Senator Lydia Thorpe, who who joined one of the the session opening on Saturday morning, um, and that was a real that was a real highlight um, to hear, I guess, the kind of very dark and uh, very sad stories of the things that um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people go through, uh, but also the inspiring campaigns that are, uh, are resisting that. But then there was also the link with you know the the you know the Kanak people in in uh, Kanaki or New Caledonia, and uh, the, the struggle of the West Papuans who are facing um, in uh, occupation from Indonesia. So I think those links were really important as well that the conference kind of drew together. Um, and I think the other topic that kind of seemed to weave through all of the sessions um, was the the rise of the far right, uh, particularly in Europe, but also you know, in India and, and, you know, in the US and in Brazil. Um, so I think that was an interesting element. Like you say, it really, um, really came up again and again. And obviously that, that also ties into what was kind of our headline panel, the, um, the struggle in, in Gaza, um, which obviously is the kind of the pinnacle of expression of that, um, mm. you know, the outright genocide happening. Well, that's a, that, that's a, I think I feel like because that opening panel happened at the start of the weekend by the time we got to the end of it and had all these other amazing discussions it kind of like fell to the wayside a little bit but that was amazing particularly hearing from Leila Khaled uh which was just a real privilege and an honor to hear from such a dedicated long-term activist such an iconic kind of uh, figurehead of the Palestinian liberation movement so just to be in the kind of in the room when she was zooming in um if people have been following They'll obviously know that uh, her visa was refused, so she wasn't able to attend in person. Um, but it was, yeah, it was great to hear from her. And for, ha for her to have to shoot off to a meeting immediately afterwards, she shows that she's not just, you know, a sim symbolic figurehead. She's still actively in the struggle, which uh, I really love to see. Yeah, and 100%. to hear from her saying that, you know, that sh she and others are actually inspired by what us here in, you know, Australia and the US and all, all these 
uh, Western imperialist countries are actually doing at home to fight this. That, that pe- someone like Layla can be inspired by that. Uh, that's really touching. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a great message she was saying about, you know, how the impact of the international solidarity campaign being being really important. And I think, um, you know, on that panel as well, it was good to hear kind of some of the debate around, you know, Palestinian state recognition, the two state versus one state solution. Um, we had um, the Australia Palestine Advocacy Network president, Nasser Mashni, uh, join on Zoom as well. Um, and he was saying, you know, it's great to be on the panel with, you know, one of my heroes, Leila Khaled, uh, and also Khaled Ghanem, who's a Palestinian activist and Socialist Alliance member. And then the the other name that was on that panel, uh, Salim Valley, he was incredible, his contributions, because he's a, a South African human rights um, kind of uh, activist and also involved in a whole heap of different campaigns. But he's on the BDS, the South African BDS uh, movement um, committee. So he was talking about the impact of, you know, boycotts, um, divestment and sanctions and how it, how it worked with the South African uh, situation ending apartheid. And, you know, why that's something we should that we should really emphasize in in Palestine. So it was really great to hear from him. I think uh, uh, there's we've also conducted an interview with Salim that will be uh, posted on both the Green Left uh, YouTube and website and also on this podcast feed um, discussing some of these issues as well. Um, What about some of the kind of the breakout workshops and stuff? Were any of those particular highlights for you? Um, yeah, so I, I only managed to catch one of the, the workshop sessions. Um, that was the strike back organizing workers in unorganized industries session. Um, and that was, that was really great. You just hearing how, um, how different people in different countries have pretty much the same problems really in terms of, uh, pulling people together and getting them into, to unionize, uh, workforces and, uh, organizing them, but especially hearing, um, Uncle Peter, Peter Yao's um, talking about uh, organizing delivery drivers because, uh, in you know, those those really only that's uh, an industry that's really only popped up in the last five or six years, but it's and now suddenly they're everywhere, and you know it's it's almost become easy to to for them to blend into the background. But you think about just how dangerous their work actually is on these unsteady vehicles desperately trying to make one job to the next because they only get paid per delivery um so it's actually quite inspiring to hear about that um peter himself i um managed to speak to him outside of sessions quite a bit and hear about uh an injury he s- sustained himself uh on a delivery driver which was quite her as a delivery driver which was quite horrific um and all these other stories of um, people being in- injured on that job well peter and the Singaporean, other Singaporean activists who attended were a particular highlight, I think, because if people don't know, there's such heavy, intense repression in Singapore um, of any kind of activism, really. You can't protest, you can't gather on the streets. Um, it's it's very difficult. And in fact, some of the, some while we were actually at the conference, three Singaporean activists um, were arrested for organizing a kind of a walk for Palestine and they delivered some letters with a group of other people and they were arrested. And one of those uh, was one of the guests at the previous eco-socialism conference. Um, and the, you know, the repression so heavy, like intense that we can't even publish some videos or photos or the name of one of the uh, delegate, uh, delegate of one of the activists who attended because you know, they might be you know, cracked down upon and arrested back in Singapore. But just on that note, um, I think there's so much worthwhile uh, discussion and contributions that people should check out from the conference. And pretty much all of the sessions, barring one or two, are going to be available to watch back the recording. A uh, majority of them are already online as you're listening to this. Um, and I highly recommend people at least check out some of the you know ones that particularly interest to, to them. Um, if you go to the Green Left YouTube channel or the Green Left website, uh, you'll be able to find them, but they're also going to be uploaded in podcast form on this podcast feed. So if you just look look at the podcast feed right now, there should be a few episodes up and the rest of them will be coming up over the next uh, week or two. I think it's really valuable, um, some of the discussion. I think, you know, 
it was a real privilege to actually be able to be in the room for some of these discussions. So definitely check those out. What we're going to do now um, is, unless you have anything final you would like to add, Riley, is just play um, some uh, recording of some, what other people's highlights were of the conference. So uh, on the last day, we went around and asked people what they'd enjoyed in particular um, about the, the sessions. So uh, did you have anything else to add before we go to that, Riley? Uh, well, I'm in that recording, so I'll, I'll let me speak for me. <laughs> okay, great. Well, let's hear what uh, you and a bunch of other uh, activists have to say. So um, I found the solidarity, international solidarity, really um, inspiring. And uh, yeah, all the activism that's going on and all the education as well. I think it's really important that we all gather together frequently to you know, kind of, I guess, support each other around the world, especially in times where, you know, we can feel defeated, yeah. Well, I think it was all remarkable, but I think having the international comrades, having that solidarity, getting to learn from their perspectives, getting to see them interact with each other and cross fertilize conversations, I think that is very empowering and very inspirational in carrying our activism forward here in Australia. The, the talk on the rise of the far right, I found it particularly interesting and how to fight it. Um, I also really enjoyed the talk on eco-socialism and why it's necessary. Um, and just bringing people together, bringing people to the struggle all across uh, various countries and from across the state, um, I found incredibly valuable as an activist. Um, oh, it's been so cool to see everyone and hear all of the different things that's been going on in the world. The international comrades were great. Um, yeah, seeing everyone was really cool. It was, I couldn't pick one. I've been meeting a lot of stuff like catching up with a lot of people. Someone comment that people haven't seen in years, um, but probably most of you know, Australians are going to Singapore comments. Like, you can see the amount of oppression and love I have to go. There's a way of having ways to organize this. Maybe, I mean, there are many other things like obviously, we can you know, the Palestinian struggle and being yeah, the Singaporean comments like being the most for me, most inspirational. I found everything really enjoyable, but I think what I liked was the anti-war, anti-AUKUS one. I found a lot of um, information in that, how to fight back. Um, but I find that it's very interesting, all, with all the international guests, even though there's a lot of differences, we have so much in common. Yeah, first off, uh, congratulations to the comrades of uh, Socialist Alliance and, uh, and Green Left for this absolutely incredible uh, confidence um, uh, perhaps i think the the biggest takeaway if one way to look at it you know identify at least say, two or three real crucial kind of learnings one is the that the the growth of the far right is really at the doorstep now and um, the kind of uh, challenges that it poses for social and economic uh, equality climate change etc is really real and i think in the conference we were able to discuss that and perhaps you know we we'll, we'll also find ways to fight it i think the second thing is a uh, uh, second important issue i think for me is the kind of um, the kind of colonialisms that are actually taking place even in asia today for instance what's happening in new caledonia uh, what's happening in west papua and the kind of uh, urgency uh, in solidarity that is required with the freedom struggles over there and thirdly i think even uh, in a um, in a so-called global north nation like uh, like australia uh, the kind of um, devastating uh, devastating kind of oppression of the first nations people is totally unacceptable and uh, any country that uh, that you know that's claiming to be a democracy cannot pride itself on the way it's treating the, the indigenous people of uh, its own indigenous people and i think that that struggle a struggle for justice is absolutely paramount and i'm very glad that that was brought out in this conference yeah. i found the session yesterday morning with the two first nations presenters just so that they're on different topics but oh my god it's just phenomenal what they're dealing with and, and the work that they're doing um and yeah i just found that so inspiring and in particular um uh the work that megan's doing to support um yeah, ab Aboriginal people with trauma and mental health issues and, and, and just uh, it's heartbreaking to hear, but also, yeah, I think inspiring too. There's, there's definitely hope and, yeah, and it's really got me thinking about, yeah, what I can contribute, if anything, and, and, and just, yeah, being more aware of, um, I, I guess, like, of a social work and I often think about things in an individual way because that's 
primarily how I work with people, but having those kind of presentations makes you realise it's just a, a gentle reminder of how broad these issues are and how systematic our failings as, with our health system are. Well, you know, first of all, the fact that we've been able to gather so many um, dedicated activists and organisers from the global south and all across this country um, into one place to talk about anti-capitalist resistance um, and the importance of building eco-socialism. I really love to hear from people all around the world, not just Australia, but just to see the, the, the fight, that this, the same fight that we're fighting um, in Indonesia, Philippines, uh, uh, Singapore, you know, countries that we are, are many of our allies, um, but, uh, you know, they are in many ways very imperialist, uh, uh, authoritarian countries. Uh, I think definitely hearing from our international speakers and the struggles they're engaged in, um, particularly um, when they're sort of facing authoritarian regimes or sort of being arrested or shot or lynched, um, some of the stories we heard definitely um, I think gives us some perspective here um, to keep going. And it's really inspirational seeing particularly younger activists internationally like fighting so hard um, in really hard conditions. So I think the really inspiring sessions were um, hearing the international speakers talking about class struggle in their home countries and so many of the issues that our international workers delegates are facing seeing the links um, that Australian workers are also facing and of course neoliberalism and capitalism being the um, the uniting kind of battle that we've got to um, work against uh, but I also just loved linking those issues of class struggle with um, what's happening with the ecological crisis because of course um, capitalist extractivism is um, everybody in the world is suffering because of that and particularly um, uh, that is a class issue and it's really important to talk about the ecological crisis in terms of class issues. So. It was really inspiring hearing from so many like different movements across the globe really like all these the international guests like especially from the folks we heard from uh, like Singapore um, and yeah so it was like really inspiring that just because it's something that you don't already have always have like in your in your in your, your mind and they're all like really it's like a global movement i guess and you're working towards a common goal singing along to i'm a better anarchist than you live to david Roberts with all of my conrads yelling at the top of their voice rock on i think i've loved all of it um but yeah i think living now in a regional area feeling a little bit isolated from time to time it's just so refreshing and energizing to get together with other activists all in the same place to you know exchange experiences learn from each other and just enjoy the sort of solidarity and comradeship of you know being together in the same place oh i love that we had international guests i always love to hear what the struggles are in other places in the world because I always believe that if you're a socialist, you're an internationalist. So the struggle should be internationalized. We're in this together. So. I think it's a wonderful display of solidarity. It's it's basically an Asia Pacific uh, eco socialist conference, but the whole discussion's been great, and the and the sort of um, the topics we talked about covered the whole gamut of you know the human struggle. Well, I thought it was an incredibly inspiring conference. Um, as, a, as socialists, I think it is really the value of internationalism is so important and the experience of learning from socialist activists in countries such as Singapore, uh, to be able to hear from a veteran like Leila Kled on the Friday night and also hearing from the experiences of socialists in the Asia Pacific from India, uh, Pakistan, Malaysia and the Philippines, I think is immensely valuable. And I think we have the eco Social Conference provided an incredible platform to be able to share those experiences on how we can fight for a world beyond capitalism. Well, there you go. If that doesn't convince you to uh, check out some of the sessions from the eco Socialism Conference, I don't know what else will. Um, but yes, definitely go to the YouTube uh, channel or the greenleft.org.au um, to find all the recordings from the sessions or, as we said, check out the uh, feed in the podcast. Um, uh, as well, what you can do to support uh, 
you know, future conferences and to support Green Left who who organize the conference and um, do, you know, put in a lot of hard work to get this going is you can become a Green Left supporter at greenleft.org.au forward slash support. It's only $5 a month to get the digital subscription or uh, $10 a month to get, you know, the hard copy paper, um, which, you know, is, is particularly uh, good. As I know, Riley, you like to take it to a, to a cafe and, and, and read it out uh, on the streets. So um, that's really valuable. Um, so just head to greenleft.org.au forward slash support to, to keep us, you know, keep the lights on and keep this project going. These conferences aren't cheap to do. And as socialists, we're not flush with money. So every, every subscription helps and every, every bit of that uh, really makes a difference. 100%. And, you know, you can also make a donation as well if, if you're able to. Uh, but that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, we'll come back next week with a kind of more proper uh, news discussion episode. Um, as there's so much happening at the moment. I mean, uh, just as we're recording, the British election results are coming out. French election is happening. And there's also everything around uh, Fatima Payman and her leaving the Labour Party. So we'll discuss a bunch of those stories on the next episode next week. Um, but until then, uh, yeah, thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed uh, this little highlights from eco-socialism uh, discussion. Bye.